Hi, everybody. So glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the Royal London Theatre here in London, England, for tonight's main event. Ten rounds of heavyweight action between George Foreman and Lennox Lewis. Okay, let's have a good clean fight. Catch him up and let's go. Well, they've been waiting for this moment and now they get it. Round one underway. <laughs> there is a whole lot of beef in the ring right now. Lennox Lewis against Big George Foreman. What's the one distinct advantage each man has? Well, for Lewis, maybe he's a little quicker. And you know, believe it or not, he's even bigger than George. He can stand on the outside. He can try to force George to come in, time him with that great right hand. But George has the better chin. George is a guy that, if it comes down to it, that old saying, push comes to shove, he might be the last guy standing. And a sharp counterpunch by Lewis. They both decide to bring it. <laughs> Halfway through round number one. How about that exchange? <laughs> nice block by Lewis. Throws a counter punch there. It is a seesaw battle early on here. Amazing stuff out of these two. trainer here to get his hands on his guy. His guy just got tagged pretty good there. And when he looks into his eyes, what is he looking for? Oh, first of all, he's looking to see whether or not his guy is still there. You know, he got stung pretty good. And then what he has to do is make sure his guy's listening to him and telling him, hey, look, you got caught. You've been caught before. This is the way we can fix it. This is what you got to do to correct things. One. Good work by George Foreman. Teddy, why is it in boxing that there are so many distinct styles that are defined by geography or culture or ethnicity, where we have a Mexican-styled fighter, an Eastern European, you know, upright fighter, an American-styled fighter? Why is that? Because you are influenced by your surroundings, by the temperament of the people in your surroundings. Aggressive people, aggressive style. Very thoughtful people, people that are very cerebral. Well, you're going to have a defensive style. You're going to have a very careful. Oh, George Foreman stunned and he is hurt. Oh, George Foreman is hurt here. And he's going to look to waste some time and gather some strength by hugging his opponent. And that's what he's going to do is use that strength. And you just said it, Joe. Use it to hug him. Hug him so tight that the referee has to come in there with a crowbar to separate them. A very crisp combination by Lewis. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. Oh, 
Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. That's a good block by Lewis. And round number three is underway. Foreman's opponent was able to get to him and stun him in that last round. Here we are early in this round. Let's see if he can get to him again. Well, a lot about seeing if he's going to get to him is how he's been able to understand why he got hurt. Did his corner help him out and tell him, hey, you got hit with a left hook. Keep that right hand high. He got hit right there, but he also gave one. Solid effort by Lewis. <laughs> Nice combination, landing more than one. Both were able to score. On the mark, the counter punch by Lewis. Lennox Lewis is swelling is exactly what his opponent wanted to see. Foreman's got a way of just getting away from that punch. There are different kinds of power punchers, Teddy. Some are sharp and accurate, some are thudding and impactful. Where does George Foreman lie on that scale? A bludgeoning kite puncher, a guy that you have a headache for about a week. He hits you with such thudding punches that it starts to just break you down as time goes on. But either way, he intimidates you with the force of the punch, with the effect of the punch, and the knowledge that he's in front of you with that ability. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Lewis. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. Watch the headshot. Foreman's not putting forth the defense you need to have at this level of the game. No, but you got to come here with it, Joe. You know, it's easy for you and me to sit back and say, hey, you got to block punches. You got to move your head. You got to evade punches. Use your legs. But if you haven't been taught that, and believe it or not, this is boxing 101. This is basic rudiments, basic fundamentals. Some guys have not been taught the defensive skills. George Foreman smashed by an uppercut. Lewis is doing a good job tonight on the outside. He's able to score from the outside, keeping a safe distance away from his opponent. Well, he knew it was a smart strategy to stay on the outside. He probably didn't know it was going to pay off this well because he's just getting to his guy easily. Oh, yeah, if he was in the casino, I'm telling you, it's all coming up cherries for him. But right now, if his opponent has any shot to hit that jackpot, he needs to move that head, move those feet, get inside. just have not seen the big shots from this guy. He is not throwing the power punches, Teddy. What would you say to him? Well, first of all, I would say to him, what do you think, that he's going to make a deal with you? If you don't hit him hard, he won't hit you hard? No, no, it doesn't work like that, my friend. He's going to get confidence now. He's going to take advantage of this. George Foreman talks about the rope-a-dope, saying, you remember the rope-a-dope? I was the dope. That has stayed with him. Yeah, it has. You know, that was a ghost that had to be exercised. And it took him 20 years to exercise those ghosts. Great fight. I mean, just a great fight. Both guys giving their all back and forth. It doesn't get much better. George Foreman's got to deal with a cut on his cheek right now. The good news is it's below the eye, but still, it could get nasty as the fight progresses. Get in there. Final 10 seconds. <laughs> Foreman's got to understand where he is right now in this fight. He'd be delusional to think that this is a close fight. He's down. Yeah, and I don't think I'm delusional, and I have him down. 
But the thing right now is he's got to roll those dice. He has to really gamble if he's going to get back in charge of this fight. They start up again. Back to action here with another round. But who knows how much longer it'll last. This has been a completely one-sided fight. A headshot blocked. Oh, a nice two-punch combo by Lewis. Lewis is doing good damage with the combination punching. Well, right there's a good example of the benefit of combination punching. You miss the first or the second, the third and the fourth, they land. Foreman's got a way of just getting away from that punch. Foreman's learning a lesson here that you don't want to learn, and that is no head movement means you're going to take shots to the head. Well, Customato used to tell me, if you don't move your head, guess what? The other guy will move it for you. Right now, the other guy is moving his head for him. Painfully so. by George Foreman. Lennox Lewis is now at a point in this fight where his defense is going to become crucial. He has to protect that eye. The swollen eye is getting worse. Yeah, he does. He has to be cognizant of everything. He needs anything out there that he can use for an advantage right now. He's got to position himself where his opponent can't get into the place where he can throw punches towards that bad eye, towards that blind spot where he has no vision. He's got to keep the fight where that good eye is always able to pick up those punches. He's got to position himself in a perfect way now. Protecting his head well with his guard. Not what he was looking for. That's a miss right there by Lewis. Great pace to this fight, Teddy. These guys are not coming out of fifth gear. Nobody's slowing down. No, they're fighting a sixth, seventh, and eighth gear. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. Well placed right hands from both men. Solid right hands headline that exchange. Lennox Lewis staying well out of range of danger from his opponent and scoring on his own. Nice job on the outside. Lewis's jab is now carrying this fight for him from the outside. Yeah, because the jab is carrying the fight. You know, it all starts with that jab. And right now, that jab is leading the way. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the work by George Foreman. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bringing it every which way they are. So you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful. Back and forth they go, each man getting the best of it. Oh, that's good stuff. Fired right back with one of his own. Good work by Lennox Lewis. Foreman's in a hole. There's no other way to say it. He's losing this fight badly. Yeah, if he was in a casino, guess what? The house would have most of his money. And right now, he needs to hit a seven. And that means he needs to roll those dice. He needs to gamble. Back to action. 
action now. We're underway in what has been a completely one-sided fight. You get the sense this one may not go the distance. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by George Foreman. Good block by Lennox. George Foreman's not having a fight go his way. He's a slugger. He wants to slug it out. That's not the type of fight that's winning it right now. Now you put all your eggs in one basket, and that's what he's done. He doesn't know any other way. And guess what? You get an omelet. Or oh, he's being made into scrambled eggs. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Lennox Lewis. One, two, three, four. Foreman is rising up after being knocked down. Big George went down. Now he's going to continue on. And now he has to find a way to kill that clock. George Foreman's in a real tough spot now. There's no doubt about it that the eye has worsened. That cut is really looking... Well, we know he survived earlier, but now he goes down for a second time. One, two, three, four, five. So big George Foreman Able to get up after that knockdown, and now a real challenge in front of him. Now the challenge right now is really the opposite of any challenge that he's ever faced before. Usually the challenge is how to get rid of a guy, you know, how to put his big paws on a guy. Now he has to find a way to survive. Good way to protect the midsection. Foreman's in a tough spot right now, Teddy. I don't know really what the answer is for him because he hasn't shown me enough to prove that he can change the way this fight is going. He's down bad. On my scorecard, too. And right now, he's got to do something that you hate to be in this position, but he's in that position. You have to take chances. You have to risk it all now to be able to catch up. Lennox Lewis blocks that punch. the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. He's committed to that left hand and it's working out. Lewis is in. There it is! George Foreman's in a bad spot right now. He's been stunned. Come on now. He's going around now, Teddy, like his legs are made out of wet noodles. Yeah, and my mother was boiling the water. There he goes down from that headshot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Foreman is rising up after being knocked down. Big George went down. Now every punch landed in that combination, and he goes down hard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. it this fight is over lewis is gonna be partying tonight a knockout victory lennox lewis is your winner by knockout everybody but his opponent is happy now that was an entertaining fight i'm joe tessitore for teddy atlas saying thanks for being with us 
and enjoy the rest of your night.